I struggle every day just to stand, just to walk or to ride that. And so everything is a big accomplishment. Recently, as you may have seen, I have uploaded a couple of videos that I shot for Haybike. Haybike is a pretty cool company, they make electric bikes, and I have started working with them on these new projects, kind of like a short documentaries that we've been doing. And the last one we just shot in Ohio, which was pretty fun, it's about golf and man who had a stroke and how Haybike actually helped him to go through recovery. And I learned a lot of things on these shoots and particularly on the last one. And I would love to share with you guys eight, eight tips that will help you to create better videos and especially better short documentaries. And I hope you will learn something new from this video. Tip number one, timing is everything. Since this is not just a short 30, 40, 60 second video that you will just put it on the social media and that's it without a script or anything. These type of videos require a lot of planning and scripting, even though it's, let's just say freestyle since it's a documentary and the talent will have to tell their story, but you will have to plan the time and the date you meet with them. Make sure you have a backup plan and you talk to the talent, you talk to the person that, let's say, to make sure they have time, let's say, on the next day. So you don't show up flying far and be like, oh, okay, so what do we do now? Like, the weather is bad and then the flight was delayed. Will the talent have time tomorrow? Will they be available the day after? Things in that nature and pretty much make sure you are organized to every little thing and you just have plan b or even c for every little scenario and the more of those scenarios you can think of the better tip number two your gear is your enemy this is a tricky one because you want to make sure you bring everything with you but also don't bring too much and make sure some things don't get on your way for example if this is an interview make sure you got of course two angles couple of microphones, couple of, couple of different microphones so you have a backup. And then let's say if you shoot B-roll, maybe you need to have a specific lens or a filter. So you have to think of every single scenario, but let's say if you are limited on time and let's say you just have five hours for everything, don't overdo it, especially on the gear side, because you will end up running around with the cage and taking off the camera from the cage and put it on the gimbal and switching lenses. And all this will take away from the shooting and the time you have to get the shot, but instead you will be worrying about changing lenses and, and your rigs or gimbals and, and so on and so on. So the more simple, the better, especially if you're tight on time. But of course, if you have more time, sure, and especially if it's local, bring everything with you especially don't forget them the batteries and the memory cards tip number three give the talent time to talk so every time you ask a question make sure you give the talent time to answer sometimes you'll wait a couple five extra seconds and sometimes you'll get some best answers later after he finished answering so don't be quick to ask the next question, but just give them some extra time, even if they say the same thing second time, but that second time actually might be that best take that you will use in the video. Tip number four, and it is related to tip number three, always ask the second question, why or how does that make you feel? So for example, if the main question is, what was the story about this and that, then just start asking questions like why? Why did you do that? Why this happened? How did this make you feel? So if you asking those type of questions, you'll, have, you'll make the talent tell more about the story in details. And sometimes they'll tell you some things that you wouldn't even expect them to say and ask, which was not related to the first question, that would, might be really valuable to the story. And that actually happened to the story that we just filmed about golf where we had like three different stories about the bike itself, about golf, and about uh, the guy having a stroke. And, and we were thinking, what is this video gonna be about? Is this about golf? Is it about biking? 
or is it about the stroke story? So of course the bike had to be almost like a product placement. So we couldn't just talk about the bike because that's what we sell in. But what is the main story? Should we talk about golf? And, and you know, that kind of what happened during the shoot. Uh, asking questions, we saw what the talent also wants to talk about. So does he want to actually tell his ex experience on what happened with his health and his recovery and then transition to golf and then transition to bike? Or maybe we just start talking about golf. Sometimes it's good to ask secondary questions to figure out what is the path that of, of the documentary is actually about. Tip number five, have the mic always on. I'm talking about even if you're shooting B-roll, I have attached the lav mic and I never took it off from the talent. So every time we shot a B-roll of the talent riding a bike, playing golf, the mic was always on under the shirt, actually the same way as I have it right now. And it's just being taped to my body. That way, if there is wind, you wouldn't hear as much of wind and any noise vibrations and stuff like that. Let's say if the talent says something cool or that you would love to use that wasn't shot during the interview, but it was shot actually during the B-roll, you have crispy audio. As I mentioned before, it's the best to use a couple different mics, but not just the same type of mics. But for example, if you're using two camera bodies, I was using a shotgun mic with the wind, that cat, and then I was using a lav mic, which was connected to the camera wirelessly, a Sennheiser, and then I also had a Tascam direct mic that was just sitting in his pocket that I would sync by clapping all those three mics. And that way I have two backups of main audio. So I had just a regular mic with a dead cat on top of the camera that was capturing all the surrounding sounds and the talent speaking. And then I had the lav mic sticking out and being attached to his um, shirt. And the reason I attached another lav mic under the shirt because it was windy, that's actually the mic that I ended up using because that was the clearest, crispiest audio. And I did use a one shot from the B-roll section and I ended up using the audio from that B-roll using that same mic that was on the talent all the time because it was something valuable that he said and then I was like, oh wow, the audio is great. So why don't we use that? Tip number six, make sure you always have an ending. No matter how is your story unfolding and of course you have some intro and then the actual main part of the story, make sure you always have an ending or even better two or three. So what I did, I recorded a couple different endings for the video. That way I have options. Let's say if I change my story in a way during the editing, that way I have different takes for the ending of a story because the ending is super important. And the last tip, kind of a bonus tip, is make sure to shoot everything on a different focal lens because if it's run and gun scenario and if you're tight on time, I would even suggest just using 24-70 lens. That way you always have covered the wide and the tight. But if you have a bit more time and flexibility, I would suggest using at least three focal lenses. So for example, 35, which is the middle, 24, which is wide and 50 or 85, which is tight. That way you can showcase the story in a different way, not just from a tight perspective. And let's say if you shoot everything at 85, it's gonna look weird because you're just gonna have blurred out background everywhere. But sometimes you wanna show the same place with a wide angle, let's say 24 or 16. And that kind of adds on to the story. It adds on to the visuals and just makes the image more richer. Well, that is it for me. I will be posting the actual doc um, within probably two weeks. It's already ready, but I just can't post it yet. Uh, I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you have any other tips, I would love if you guys share that in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Peace.